A settlement in the north comes under giant attack, and you decide which location to use. Bryn Shander, a walled town in the heart of the Icewind Dale, Golden Fields, a fortified farming settlement and abbey northeast of Waterdeep, or Tribor, a frontier town and caravan rest stop in the Desrian Valley. So which town should I pick? Hello everyone, I'm Alex, and today we are going to be answering this question, as well as going over some tips for getting the most out of Chapter 2 of Storm King's Thunder. This chapter includes a detailed overview of each settlement and the attacking giant's specific goal. If the characters help defend the location, they are rewarded with quests that lead them deeper into the adventure. In this video, I am going to go over the pros and cons of each town, tips for running the respective encounter, and the quests that are given to the party at the conclusion. Let's dive right in. In this chapter, each player runs not only a player character, but also an NPC who has ties to the settlement that the characters are defending. The book has detailed rules for the special NPCs and suggests that each player should receive control of one. It specifically states to give the players control of the NPCs when the giant attack begins, and not before. This is the most important advice in the book. Do not mention the mechanics of the encounter when the players enter the city or when they meet one of these NPCs prior to the giant attack. Wait until after the attack begins before explaining how it works. Another idea is to simply not give control of the special NPCs to the players at all. The book states that this is a tool to motivate the players into defending the town, and your party may not need such motivation. It can also be overwhelming to have extra resources to keep track of, and some of the NPCs have weak stats and can be easily killed. If you prefer, you can give the players some expendable allies for the fight, like Town Guard or Militia. The special NPCs can still interact with the players before and after the fight. Bryn Shander is the largest of the ten settlements known collectively as Ten Towns, located in the frigid heart of the Icewind Dale. Here, caravans from the south converge with traders from across the Icewind Dale to swap goods and rumors. There is a ton of material to draw from Rime of the Frost Maiden, another adventure by Wizards of the Coast. This book has quests, details of every settlement in ten towns, and encounter tables. It also provides a more complete description of the Icewind Dale as a whole, and can be used to make the area much more memorable. Icewind Dale is an iconic and heavily referenced setting in the Forgotten Realms. If your group has veteran D&D players, they will certainly recognize the name and be familiar with the location. It's cold, grim, and feels secluded from the rest of the north, and can be a good diversion from the overarching plot. It is almost a requirement for the party to come out on top in the Frost Giant encounter. I personally think it is the most well-balanced of the three towns, with being able to be beaten while still requiring the party to take significant action to do so. This encounter can make the party feel like they had a victory while still showing them how powerful giants can be. Icewind Dale is isolated to the far north of the map, with only one road the players can travel on to leave and enter. The quests given to the players at the end of the chapter seem to take the most linear path compared to the other two towns. Your party could also spend far too much time in the Icewind Dale if you add too much additional content. You want the party to get out and explore as much as the world in Chapter 3, not tie them down to one area. The Ring of Winter is a red herring that leads to a dead end. It can feel frustrating to the players or cause them to have the wrong priorities. This is easily fixed by having the investigation into the ring lead to plot-related quests. More on that later. When the Frost Giants attack, they surround Bryn Shander and demand that the Speaker surrender Artis Simber, who the Giants incorrectly believe is hiding in the town. The adventurers are up against a group of 12 Frost Giants and two Winter Wolves. However, only three Giants oppose them directly at the gates. The great thing about this encounter is it is easily balanced, as you can have some of the giants break into the wall and attack as the book suggests. The book says that the giants are after artists specifically, but if Sirak's lineage is revealed, they should aim to kidnap him and escape. This adds an interesting element of failure to the encounter, 
and it makes it so the giants don't completely level the town if the adventurers can't hold them back. Another thing to keep in mind, if the players blast the giants with AoE spells from the top of the walls while they attempt to break inside, they may also cause damage to the gate itself in the process. Augrek's quest is relatively straightforward. If you prefer, you can cut out the middleman and have her give the players the gems and advise them to visit Dashara of Fireshear. Sirak's quest is the main quest of Bryn Shander, as it seems directly connected to the story. If the players make it all the way to Waterdeep, consider having Zelron Roaringhorn direct the players towards Chasloth Yarghorn, a character from a Golden Fields quest. That way the players don't hit a dead end. This lead can quickly take the party to Harshnag and keep the plot moving. Duvessa's quest is an interesting way to get transportation across water early. The players are most likely to pursue the frost giants first, so a ship will be needed eventually. This can be more of a by the way from Duvessa than an actual quest. She would also have similar motivations of Markham, and her mentioning the ship could be a reward for his quest rather than its own. Markham's quest is a great way to get the players to explore more of the Icewind Dale. As I mentioned earlier, if you have Rime of the Frost Maiden, this quest can be greatly expanded. If you want to get lost in the tundra for a session or two, give the players Markham's quest first. When they return, they can get the subsequent quests, and you can introduce the Weevil subplot. Beldora's quest is critical, because it introduces the Harpers, and leads the players to the teleportation circles. If you desire, you can cut Augrek's quest, and have Beldora or Thwip supply the gems. Then recommend that the players visit the Shara of Fireshear so they can hail a quick passage to Everlund and gain access to the teleportation ring. Sir Beric's quest introduces the Order of the Gauntlet and the Weevil subplot. This quest is highly optional, but many parties will latch on to a monetary reward. Keep in mind that Storm King's Thunder has no shortage of treasure, and most parties will have overflowing pockets by the end of the campaign. Goldenfields is a huge walled temple farm dedicated to Chantia, the goddess of agriculture. Called the Granary of the North, Waterdeep and its neighbors consume the temple's reliable output. Goldenfields is relatively close to the Chapter 1 location of Nightstone. If Zephros didn't make the cut for your adventure, it would be the most feasible to get to on foot or horse. The host of capable guards in Goldenfields can make for an easy encounter for your players. If you are worried about the martial prowess of your party, the Golden Fields encounter is the easiest way to adjust with the large number of guards. The goblin huckers used by the hill giant army are tremendously flavorful and downright hilarious. If you don't run Golden Fields, consider using them later at the den of the hill giants. Hill giants are relatively bland and uninteresting compared to the frost and fire giants encountered in the other two towns but the goblin huckers definitely make up for that bit. The motivations of the hill giants are humorous at best, however they can be given a dark spin as they are directly impacting the food supply of the small folk. The first town can really shape which giant lord your party decides to face first. Odds are that the first giant lord they confront will be the same giant that they encounter in chapter 2. If the players are able to locate the den of the hill giants in chapter 3 via the old tower encounter, it could cause the adventure to be derailed slightly if they obtain the conch before meeting Harshnag and visiting the Eye of the All-Father. However, this is easily fixed by having Chief Guz's conch not function properly. Golden Fields has no quest that leads to the Harper teleportation circles, but that can easily be fixed by simply adding one. The Hill Giant attack is split into two sections. First, the players and special NPCs confront a small invading force inside the walls. During that battle, the alarm is sounded after one or two groups are defeated. As the invading forces begin to retreat back over the wall, Lob and Og leap over to confront the party and any remaining NPCs. Simultaneously, the ogres begin launching goblins at the guards along the top of the wall. The defenses of Goldenfields converge and begin fighting the army in full force. Some guards lower rope ladders and come down the wall to assist the players with the hill giants if needed. If the players defeat or subdue Lob and Og, they can climb up these ladders and assist the guards with driving off the remainder of the army. 
Shalvis's quest should only be offered to the players if they have ties to the Gentarum, or have shown that they possess qualities of someone who would join the organization. Lifferlass's quest introduces the Emerald Enclave, but otherwise has no real ties to the plot. If you wish to have the Emerald Enclave take a more forward approach against the Giants, or if you have a player who is already in the faction, then consider using this quest. Jai Lang's quest is relatively flavorless. If anything, it is a test to see if the players will hand over an expensive art object for a reward that could be less valuable. Jai Lang's motivations also seem a bit uninspired. I would recommend saving this reward for an NPC that the players rescue or bond with later in the adventure, unless she already fits this bill. Miros's quest leads the players to the Old Tower encounter in Chapter 3. If you want your players to encounter Chief Ge and the Hill Giants early, consider running this quest. If you want your party to stay on track but still get the reward, you can have Moog be absent from the Old Tower. Naxine's quest is the main quest of Golden Fields. Her membership in the Lord's Alliance should be a hint to the players of its significance. This quest introduces the characters to Chasloth Yarghorn. Chasloth informs the characters that Old Gnawbone, an ancient green dragon, should know what to do to end the giant threat. If the party travels to the Crypt Garden Forest, Old Gnawbone directs them towards Harshnag and the Eye of the Allfather. Orin's quest leads the players back towards Nightstone to the town of Daggerford. If you want to give your players a reason to return to Nightstone, explore the Gentarum, or run the Daggerford encounter from Chapter 3, then consider running this quest. The bustling mercantile town of Tribor stands where the long road meets the Evermore Way. Tribor's name is thought to have come from a traveler's tale of slaying three boars here on the same day over 400 years ago. Nearly half of Tribor's population lives outside the town proper, on sprawling ranches and neighboring farmsteads. Tribor is the perfect central location in the north to start Chapter 3. It is a bustling town full of prosperous adventure and is a prime example of a successful frontier town in the north. The town itself offers interesting quests, even without the giant attack, and can be a place to be explored if visited in Chapter 3. The Fire Giant's motivations and imposing power make the encounter interesting. The leads are connected to the plot and can cause the players to become invested in finding answers. The Fire Giants are a force to be reckoned with, and they don't come alone. This encounter is easily the most difficult and can lead to some or all of the special NPCs being slain, or even some members of the party if they refuse to back down. The fire giant attack should ideally occur while the players are in or near the town square. Read the description to the players and show the approaching fire giant forces. The players will either confront the forces directly or attempt to ambush them as they approach. Ideally, the players should become preoccupied fighting the orgs, orcs, and magmans while the giants dig up the Vindadod fragment. If the players attempt to stop them, the giants quickly reveal their might. This encounter will likely end with the fire giants successfully extracting the fragment and leaving town, which give the players a great motivation to grow in power and challenge the giants again. Darathra's quest is the main quest of Tribor and introduces the Harpers. This quest can also lead to Harshnag if modified slightly. Simply have Corwin inform the party of Harshnag's existence and task them with locating him. He could provide a lead to Chasloth Yarghorn or to Harshnag's location directly. Darza's quest introduces the Weevil subplot. This quest is interesting but not necessary to the plot as I mentioned earlier. Narth's quest takes the players to Nornar's Hold and can be an interesting side venture to explore in Chapter 3. It is ultimately unrelated to the overall plot, but can lead the players to the edge of the High Forest. Urgula's quest rewards the party with a giant slayer weapon. I personally think this quest should be given to the players regardless of which town you pick for Chapter 2. The reward is too good to pass up on and gives the party a great weapon for dealing with the giants throughout the adventure. This quest eventually leads the party to Yartar. Once the players arrive, I highly recommend foregoing the second half of this quest for the Dungeon Master's Guild optional supplement, Kraken's Gamble. The weapon can easily be located in the treasure room at the end. Perhaps the corrupt captain was a regular at the Grand Dame and was swept into the chaos. 
Orthavir's quest feels strange, as it asks the players to steal from a noble house. If the players are members of the Jantarum or have ties to devil worship, then consider using this quest. Grelwyn's quest leads the players to Citadar Felvar, where they will receive another quest to investigate Iron Slag. This isn't the only way the players can be led to Iron Slag in Chapter 3. If the players arrive too early, they will surely face complications. This can also cause issues later, as the players will know the location of a giant lord and have no need to do the oracle's quest in Chapter 4. It is ultimately up to you how the adventure plays out, but keep these things in mind. I personally would pick Tribor for people running the raw adventure for the first time. It offers the most for the players to do and has the most interesting quests. That being said, the quests offered in each town can be switched and swapped around as needed, as I have mentioned several times already. Even if the special NPC dies, you can have the hook be given by someone else. I would decide what you want the players to do in Chapter 3 and offer the quests that will lead to those locations and plot hooks. Be sure to have an idea of how they will meet Harshnag, as that will be what they are trying to accomplish even if they don't realize it. Finally, if you're looking for more tips and resources for running each town in Chapter 2, check out these in-depth modules on the Dungeon Masters Guild, link in the description. Thanks for watching, hopefully you have an idea of which town you want to run and which quests you want to give your party afterwards. Check back for my next video going over the top 10 locations in Chapter 3 and my tips for running the 3 special encounters at the end of the chapter.